in the 12 months since President Bola met Tinubu's inauguration on May 29, 2023, Nigeria has embarked on a transformative journey towards stability, prosperity, and security, guided by the eight point renewed hope agenda. This milestone is meticulously detailed in the Ministry of Information and National Orientations report titled one year of the Tinumbu administration forging a safer, stronger, and more prosperous Nigeria. Highlighting the significant strides made under President Tinumbu's stewardship to address critical national challenges and implement comprehensive policies aimed at fostering national growth and development. Despite economic challenges marked by turmoil and unemployment, the administration's decisive economic reforms have stabilized the economy and ignited growth. A pivotal move was the abolition of the unsustainable fuel subsidy directing approximately 10 billion US dollars annually towards vital sectors such as healthcare, education, infrastructure, and security. This bold action alone resulted in a 50% reduction in petrol importation and increased revenues for state and local governments. The elimination of the foreign exchange subsidy and the harmonization of forex rates fortified the Nigerian economy, propelling the Nigerian stock exchange to the pinnacle of global performance and bolstering the strength of the Naira. This claims by the Ministry of Information. To mitigate the impact of these economic measures, the administration rolled out several interventions, including a wage increase to 35,000 Naira monthly for civil servants, the establishment of a tripartite committee for wage restructuring, the creation of an infrastructure support fund for states internationally. The administration has successfully attracted over 30 billion US dollars in investments enhancing Nigeria's global economic, economic strength. However, the 2023 presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, on Tuesday said President Bola Tinubu's policies did not create prosperity, but have rather popularized the poor and bankrupted the rich. In a statement on, on Tuesday, Atiku reviewed the administration over the past year, criticizing the All Progressives Congress led government for not presenting any plans for economic remodeling, but instead implementing a mix of policies to address it. Joining us is the immediate past chairman of Chartered Accountants, Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, Lagos, and District Society, Alistair Wilkos. We also have joining us a public affairs analyst, Dr. Kachi Ononuju, and the executive director, Center for Rights and Grassroots Initiative, Nelson Ekujimi. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you, Bola, for having Good me. To it's my you. pleasure. <laughs> it's my pleasure to be around, Bala. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Alistair, how would you want to summarily start your take on the last one year of uh, President Tinumbu's uh, administration? Well, uh, well uh, I think um, I would say it's a mixture of uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, depending on the side of the stick you are you are you are holding. Um, the president came in with didn't mix world right from Ego Square. He began to set out his policy directions, and um, well, people criticize him for that that you made a statement without having the plans to to manage the aftermath, but. Uh, sometimes it's also good, uh, I, I criticize it, but sometimes it's also good for you to shoot before you aim uh, for the second bullet. Um, so the, the economic agenda of the president was clear. We are moving away from departing from the old uh, structure that has not worked and has put, put Nigerians in debt, even though it seems we are uh, the, the so-called proverbial common man uh, was having certain things easy. Um, you just had to change the narrative. Uh, so economically, I think um, 
quite a wide range of options on the table, and they are trying out every one of it to see which will be better suited for the economy. Uh, in the last few months, we've seen where the CBN has come into play uh, heavily in the money in the monetary policy arena. Um, uh, the the NPR has moved from about 22 uh, basis point, 22,000 basis point to now we're on a 26. That's quite a substantial move. And um, is it the right policies? Uh, we need to allow them to mature for us to know. But generally, apart from the economic space, uh, one area that Nigerians has always had issues talking about uh, security and food and uh, security of the land and then agricultural production, food security. Now, you discovered that Nigeria has been plagued with wide range um, inflationary trend, um, especially food inflation. And uh, it, 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 it. Alistair. Yeah, I, I think it may be a good idea for us to uh, make references to the inaugural speech of the president, especially as as it relates to the sectors. I, I was just wondering, maybe I should start by reading out what he intimated the Nigerian public with his objective in security although it must be accentuated at this juncture that is only one year into a four-year tenure. But uh, this was exactly what he said in his inaugural speech in relation to security. Security shall be the top priority of our administration because neither prosperity nor justice can prevail amidst insecurity and violence. To effectively tackle this menace we shall reform both our security doctrine and its architecture. We shall invest more in our security personnel, and this means more than an increase in number. We shall provide better training, equipment, pay, and firepower. What is your take? Taking each of those points, a review of the security doctrine and architecture, which would ordinarily, uh, I would want to believe, given my understanding of English language, a total review, strategic reform of the security system, and his promise to improve the welfare and the operational, operational wherewithal of the, of the security personnel, you're taking the last one year of the administration. Um, well, many Nigerians like uh, like me, sitting from my advantage position, Gola, will think that the president is not doing much in security. Um, well, because we are not seeing certain movement or which we expect to see, so one will expect that he has not doing much. But I would say, um. Since I said from my advantage position, because I'm not in the theater and to know what and what is happening behind the scene. But in terms of on the street, we've not seen anything dramatically change with respect to the security architecture of the, of the country. Yes, there were services, uh, the, the, the heads of the services were changed, the persons were retired, uh, but we still have this widespread um, uh, fear in the land, public fear in the land with respect to kidnapping, which is a major crime uh, with respect to banditry, which is a major crime with respect to um, even the so-called, the, the, the high-headed Boko Haram and other insurgent group. They still have had, but like you said, one year uh, in a four-year administration is, is, is well, it's just 25% of the, of the time for us to see that meaningful and appreciable uh, level of um, change that we expect to see. Uh, I, uh, I want to... uh, how would you want to how would you want to re respond to the fact that some uh, there's a dictum in one of our major uh, nationalities that speaks to the fact that the morning makes the day. What somebody is going to be doing later in the day would have been defined in the morning. Is this morning good enough for you in terms of the security progress? thus far made or security lack of progress thus far are uh, designable depending on which direction you're looking at it. 
Okay, is yeah, that I would, I would say money? that the money is good for me. We rent it. Yeah, I can. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Alistair. Yes, I can. Yes, I can hear you, Bola. What I'm saying is, I. Yes, yes. What I'm what I'm saying is, I am not sure the money is good for me with respect to the security. Um, uh, 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 how this president has tackled security. Like I said, I I I I consider the fact that I'm in an advantage position. I wouldn't say advantage because I am not in the theater. But uh, many Nigerians want to have this sense of being secured, whereby they travel on the roads without uh, much praying, uh, just as we used to do. Uh, I remember some years back, I used to travel to the north by road, and sometimes the night catches up with us so anywhere in it, be, be it forest, and then you are just relaxed. But I don't think many Nigerians can do that today. Even going to Ibadan in the broad daylight, you might just be looking at okay. your left and your right. So what we want to see, okay. so the morning is not yet good for me, so what we want to see uh, us returning back to that area, area, when you are traveling from here to Bini, and you slip off, and the driver is just going, and you can slip off in your car without uh, without having much to much to worry as to looking out on the road. Okay. So those kind of things. Okay, so like the that. money is not here good, I but like that. I said, twenty five percent over twenty five percent is too small to judge uh, a student. So let's see when fifty percent. What we get to fifty percent? I'll come back. I'll come back to you, Alistair. Uh, I'll come back to you. Uh, but you know, before I come back to you, I need to say this. As somebody who did a course once in, uh, uh, in uh, you know, criminal justice system, I know that the perception of crime is usually bigger, you know, bigger than the reality of, of, of crime. However, that does not excuse the fact that if, if people are not comfortable emotionally and otherwise in, in an environment Security is also a game of perception. Once the confidence is not there, it's not there. Dr. Namiju, welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, let's go Let's go in the direction of the economy. Let me read out verbatim. Let me read out verbatim what the president promised in his inaugural speech on the 29th of May, on the 29th of May 2023. Regarding the economy, he said, on the economy, we target a higher GDP growth. On the economy, we target a higher GDP growth and to significantly reduce unemployment. We intend to accomplish this by taking the following steps. First, budgetary reform stimulating the economy without a job will be instituted. Second, the industrial policy, the industrial policy will utilize the full range of fiscal measures to promote domestic manufacturing and lessen import dependency. Third, electricity will become more accessible and affordable to businesses and homes alike. Power generation should nearly double and transmission and distribution networks improved. We will encourage states to develop local sources as well. I have a message for our investors, local and foreign. Our government shall review all their complaints about multiple taxation and various anti-investment inhibitions, which will ensure that investors and foreign businesses repatriate their ad-end dividends and profits Oh, Dr. Nanuju, what would be yes. your take, be your response to what you were reading out our rhetorics that had to do with expectations? What we are reviewing after one year is reality. A lot of those expectations did not materialize. As you can see, economically, it's been one policy after the order, trial and error. And uh, that's why somebody would say economically, it's been all motion and no movement. So we have to pray that the government changes tax, 
and start to think through policies before they are released onto the public space. We have seen one year of well-meaning economic policies that had not come in well because of the government did not take care of what it should have done. For instance, the issue of the foreign exchange market and the petroleum and energy markets. When he removed the subsidy, it was supposed to be something free for all private importers. But as you saw, the private importers were not battling for scarce foreign exchange with those who are in custody of the 29 trillion ways and means extra printings by Mr. Mepeli and Buhari's administration. If you are not able to rein in those with their excess liquidity, they will continue to use it to compete for the ownership of the scarce foreign exchange you have in the economy. And by that doing, the importers of petroleum products wouldn't find the foreign exchange that they need. And that was why the removal of subsidy was met with scarcity of foreign exchange. And that's it. The skyrocketing of prices, which we saw damage our economy. So if you will look at it, I will tell you that the government lacks the political will to rein in the activities of those with the excess capital, which they got through the printing of $29 trillion. So if you're not able to rein in those people, you're not going to stop them from seeking for any valuable dollars in the economy. And that's why I think it's good thing about rhetorics. It's very important that the government finds a political will to fight corruption. So for you, for you, the major, the major debilitating factor uh, against what he had intimated the Nigerian public that he, he, he wanted to achieve is the potency of corruption. Is that, is that what you're saying, sir? Yes. His lack of political will to fight corruption undermined his ability to go after those keeping custody of the 29 trillion printed, Mr. Amevely. And that's 29 trillion they now use to chase any available dollar within the foreign estate market. And that's why you're sure that scarcity of dollars that actually forced the painful inflation that you see everywhere because everything has to do with imports dependent economy. And we have no stop being an import dependent economy. So, where is the foreign exchange? If those in the APC that had the foreign exchange from the ways and means of a printing of Naira, of course they will use that money to pursue the few dollars you have in the economy. And that was why he was so challenged. He started using our foreign reserves to actually try to fund the foundation market, but that was not sustainable. And now we're back to where the, do the dollar is 1.52 to I'll come, Naira. I'll, yes. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, Dr. Nanaju. Let me go to your colleague. Alistair, okay, uh, Dr. Donald, okay, Alistair, there you are. Okay, L let me read his, uh, his declared intention for job creation. He says, my administration, my administration must create meaningful opportunities for our youth. We shall honor our campaign commitment of one million new jobs in the digital economy. Our government also shall work with the National Assembly to fashion an omnibus jobs and prosperity bill. This bill will give our administration the policy space to embark on labor intensive infrastructural improvements encourage light industry and provide improved social services for the poor, elderly and vulnerable. Alistair, 
Your take of that in the last one calendar year and uh, with the caveat that it is still uh, one in a four-year tenure. Um, Alistair Wickham. Well, uh, well, I have not seen that omnibus legislation uh, with respect to the job creation that uh, the president promised. However, Gbola, um, some of the bold infrastructural um, uh, infrastructural uh, uh, um, uh, uh, activity of the president is a spin-off, is a job creation creating uh, uh, um, uh, adventure. Now, are those jobs there? Look, um, I know that the, the adjunct will be doing a, is doing quite a number of things, but unfortunately, the um, seemingly high headed monster inflation that is characterized the system is what is diminishing some of the president's noble steps. Um, quite a number of things is going on in providing the much needed critical infrastructure in the country, and when you are building infrastructure you are creating jobs, direct and indirect. Now, if that's what the president means, I think uh, he is working in achieving, in accomplishing that. I also, I also know that um, the, the, the Ministry of Digital Economy is, uh, is up and running, and there's a lot and lot happening in the digital space. So that's, those numbers I don't have, but every day we see them roll out plans and activities. And the president has also gone ahead to do quite a number of, like for instance, now the uh, the highway is being built, the uh, Lagos Calabar Highway. I mean, it has it has kicked off, and you can't imagine the number of jobs that we create. So infrastructural development creates jobs, but Nigerians want to see maybe more uh, blue collar jobs. My this industry springing up left, right, and center. Um, but again, with the like you said in your intro. With the over 30 billion in terms of pledges of um, uh, 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 what do you call it, FDI, coming to the country, some will go into manufacturing, some will go into business creation. So there's no way those money will come in or those pledges will be made that jobs will not be created. I think marketing the country is key for this kind of things to happen. And I think the president is doing a good job in terms of marketing the, the country. And it also behoves on us as citizens to, through a way, our political leaning, our political frustration from the elections, a lot of people, the elections give them frustrations and will not come out of that frustration. So that is undermining some of the bold moves. And rather than applaud some of the, the moves of the president, uh, we find fault, we find, we carpet it, we we'll, we'll rubbish it, and that is not good enough. I am not satisfied. Like I said, I've not seen that omnibus. I'm Lisa. Okay, I was I was just going to I was just going to uh, ask you a follow up question on the promised omnibus job uh, jobs and prosperity bill. To the best of my understanding, and uh, and especially to the best of my understanding of the legislative processes, uh, bills coming from the executive tend to get more priority. One would have thought that at this juncture, one year into a four-year tenure, the ministers, you know, the ministers of finance, trade, youth, and I say the minister of the digital economy ought to have gotten the, themselves together and ought to have packaged an omnibus bill. And that ought to have been submitted to the National Assembly as an executive bill that will naturally and normally in the process of lawmaking uh, get more traction. Uh, because an average person watching us now may think it's the failure of the National Assembly that they have not passed, you know, they, they have not started deliberating on such a bill. But because the president promised it, one would have thought that the uh, resources within the executive arm of government uh, would have packaged it and submitted it uh, to the National Assembly. Uh, what, what would be your response to, to, that, to that opinion? 
Well, you're not far from the truth. That is that is the reality. Uh, and, and like I said, I have not seen the omnibus bill. I've not even had that is in the works uh, within the, uh, the the state. I mean, within the executive council, uh, in all their meetings, I've not heard of any such omnibus bill. Maybe did the president forget that he promised that bill? Remember the speed within which the student okay. loan bond. Alistair, 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 I don't let me, don't let me, uh, don't let's for overflow it. Uh, your point is well made. Let, let me go to agriculture now and go to Dr. Onanuju. Uh, Dr. Onanuju. Uh, uh, oh, okay, we have uh, we have uh, the third guest available. Is, is he on audio? Okay, Dr. Onanuju, let, let, let me go to you on this. Agriculture. Rural incomes shall be secured by commodity exchange boards guaranteeing minimal prices for certain crops and animal products. A nationwide program for storage and other facilities to reduce the spoilage and waste will be undertaken. Agricultural ops will be created throughout the nation to increase production and engage in value-added processing. The livestock, the livestock sector will be introduced to best modern practices and steps taken to minimize the perennial conflict over land and water resources in this sector. These actions, food shall be made more abundant, yet less costly. Farmers shall earn more while the average Nigerian pays less. Dr. Ananaju, your take. These were all wishes expressed through rhetoric. But in the real life, insecurity has impacted negatively our agriculture. You know that. So until we're able to deal with the insecurity, that has impacted agriculture severely, we will not be able to see uh, what has actually happened no. in the agricultural area. What I can tell you is, against all those dreams expressed through rhetorics, our problem has been insecurity, largely in the agricultural field. And until government is able to do something to reverse the situation about insecurity, where farmers are not allowed to go do their farming, neither are they allowed to do their harvesting without paying the taxes levied on them by the terrorists. This is the problem. The earlier the security services dislodge the terrorists and allow the farmers to have say over their land, the better for Nigeria's agriculture in general. Okay, uh, welcome to the yeah, good evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Sorry for joining you late. Oh, never mind, my brother. I can hear you. For, good evening. Thank you for oh, you're welcome. Thank you for gracing the show. And Nelson, we're doing a thank you for having me. we're doing a, a, a review of what the president promised in his inaugural speech. Uh, especially the yes. areas where he detailed some of the things he would want to achieve. And now let's go to infrastructure. Yeah. On infrastructure, the president said, thus, we shall continue the efforts of the Buhari administration on infrastructure. Progress towards national networks of roads, rail, and ports shall get priority attention. Your take in the last one year of that promise relative to the reality. Well, the thank you very much. I I I, I must confess that um, we have seen the present administration key into the policies of its predecessor with regards to infrastructure. Uh, we cannot run away from the fact that what the former administration of President Muhammad Buhari achieved with regards to infrastructure. And you can see that the present government has embarked on that same course of action. 
we can see the uh, Porta Court Abia rail uh, uh, train running now. We can see the linkage of the of the southwest and the south south through the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway, and quite a lot is going on with regards to uh, road bridges, railway uh, as a means of transportation. So, if you look at infrastructure, I think the government has lived up to its word with regards to you know keen into those infrastructural uh, transformation that it met on ground that it is building on. It's a fact that the government is well home and dry with regards to that. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Alistair, Alistair, about time now, we went to the direction of uh, fuel subsidy. And I'm happy that Alistair, you are the chartered accountant amongst the three guests we have this evening. I know Dr. Nonuji has a background too in development economy. Uh, I would have, I would, I, I think I'd love the two of you to take to take the, uh, this on. But let's go there. Alistair, I'm reading what the president said uh, during his inauguration of the first of the We commend the decision of the outgoing administration in facing out the petrol subsidy regime which has increasingly favored the rich more than the poor. Subsidy can no longer, subsidy can no longer justify its ever increasing costs in the wake of dying, of drying resources. We shall instead rechannel the funds into better investment in public infrastructure, education, healthcare, and jobs that will materially improve the lives of millions. Alistair, how would you want to compare reality to this promise? Uh, well, with the announcement at Ego Square, subsidy is gone. Nigeria has woke up to the sad reality of the fact that uh, we need to pay more for petroleum products especially the PMS, which is the only, only uh, link of the process that, that was being subsidized. Um, did we go the full hog? I apparently do. Because um, if we compare what we pay now and what we should be paying, we have gone the full hog. I think the government is still magnanimous in still absorbing some of the cost elements because if you look at uh, other other uh, economies, other countries, you understand the fact that uh, we are still the government is still um, magnanimously absorbing some of the cost on uh, on PMS. I, I just came back from a trip to Accra. I know what uh, cost in Accra. It's you know it's almost at the at the equivalent of a thousand five hundred naira per liter. And the uh, um conversely. Transportation cost in, in Ghana is far cheaper than that in Nigeria, even though we, they pay far more for, for PMS. How, how they do it, I just cannot tell. But you see, uh, the, 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 the flip side, the good side of it is the fact that that uh, removal of the subsidy has brought in more work, more money into the government coffers. If you look at FAC, FAC now has far more money to share. If you look at state government, they now have more money. Unfortunately, we still do not hold our state accountable. We still rely and, and put all our focus on the federal government. And everything that happens, we think the federal government is the one doing it. Meanwhile, the states have increased uh, resources. Look at governments have increased resources, but we don't look at them. We keep bombarding our attention to the federal the federal cannot provide you primary schools, secondary schools. The, that is work of the states. The federal cannot provide you a primary health care or even a general hospitals. That is the work of the states. So we should look at our states. With the increase resources available to them, we should not only be putting our attention on the federal government, but we should look at our states. These states are autonomous. The autonomous and they control their resources the way they are supposed to control it. Alistair, if one, to, if one were to juxtapose what 
the naira are used to buy to what it now buys. You may, an average governor or an average spokesperson of a governor may, may tell you about the increase, the increased, uh, the so-called increase is only increase in figure, paper figure, but the reality is that what it can buy relative to what the Naira could achieve before uh, has been so uh, duplicated, not even depreciated, duplicated. So uh, uh, what would be your response to that? Uh, just a quick I, one before I go to... That is, well, uh, well, that's a lie of the devil. And that is, is what our, that is part of what is fueling the the uh, inflation crisis in Nigeria. We use that lie to extrapolate everything and to enrich ourselves as government circle. Now, I agree with the fact that the, the dollar, the, the exchange rate has, uh, has, has gone up drastically, but it shouldn't affect the price of Gary. Gary is a domestically produced item. It shouldn't affect the, the, the price of beans, the price of uh, 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 plantain, the price of those domestically produced items. If imported items might go up, yes, I agree. But domestically produced items, so I only like ourselves. Yeah, Alistair, a quick one before I go to your two uh, colleagues. Alistair, an average person producing Gary will tell you that inevitably in the production of Gary, he or she has to buy petrol. An average person producing Gary would have to also factor in. Uh, countenancing the cost of transporting the gari from the rural area where the gari is uh, is made to uh, to the places where he or she is going to be selling the gari uh, so this uh, although gari is not imported like you rightly stated but the inevitable cost of getting gari from, uh, like somebody, you know, like a Pentecostal, a famous Pentecostal pastor once, once said, uh, uh, salvation is free, uh, like water is free, but piping water from the river to your house, reticulation costs money. Water is free, but reticulation costs money. Uh, how would you want to take that before I go to, uh, well, go to your colleagues? Well, well, like I said, it, like I said, it's still lying with the devil. It is not every gary produced in the rural area is eating in the urban. The one sold in the rural area, what about that? And I just made an allusion. Let me just be quick. I said, in, in, in Ghana, which I just came back from yesterday, petrol is three times higher than the cost in Nigeria. Yeah, transportation is cheaper in Ghana than in Nigeria. So so what, so, what, so how, how do we rationalize that? You see, most times we use the dollar as a benchmark or as a benchmark to exploit ourselves to alight ourselves and to exploit ourselves, and then we blame the government. So uh, okay. there are some uh, economic uh, factors go, that is helping let, us. Let me go to, to, to let me go to, to Dr. Nonuju. <laughs> Alex, let me go to Dr. Nonuju. But before I go to Dr. Nonuju, let me corroborate uh, the point you've just made. Uh, one of the one of the jackets, one of the suits uh, I've been wearing since I came to England a couple of days ago. Somebody came to me and said, "Ah, well, uh, this is classic Savoro suit, and if you want to buy this kind of suit now in England, you're going to be buying it for around 800 pounds. And I looked at him and said, the boy who made the suit for me in Lagos, the total amount of money spent on this suit, I may be looking dapper in it, total amount of money with buying the clothes, sewing it, and you see the everything is less than, you know, just about 100 pounds. It's even less than 100 pounds, to be honest with you. And I was telling him, that should be the advantage for those of you who are in the diaspora now. The PPP, purchasing price parity, that you could bring things from Nigeria. I have a friend who takes out 10, who takes out 10 tons of agricultural produce. He's actually the biggest customer of DHL now. And I was joking with him the other day about two days ago that now you're laughing to the bank because, you know, what you buy to bring to England, you're buying at a relatively cheaper rate if you change the pounds to the naira through which you, you, you buy them. Let me go to Dr. Nonuju. Dr. Nonuju, given what your colleague Alistair has stated, 
And we also have to go to monetary policy. Let me quickly read out uh, the president's uh, promise on monetary policy. Monetary policy needs thorough house cleaning. The central bank must work towards a unified exchange rate. This will direct funds away from arbitrage into meaningful investment in, in the plant, equipment, and jobs that power the real economy. Interest rates need to be reduced to increase investment and consumer purchasing in ways that sustain the economy at a higher level. Whatever merits it had in concept, the currency swap was too harshly applied by the CBN given the number of unbanked Nigerians. The policy shall be reviewed. In the meantime, my administration will treat both currencies as legal tender. Dr. Namuju, your response to that. Hello, Doc. Are you there? Okay. Uh, I, I'm here and I'm telling you that my response is you're reading to me a wish list. It has something to do with reality. Like the gentleman was talking about Gary. I wanted to tell him that Gary has factors of production. And these factors include those who harvest the cassava. The money that brings them to do the harvesting work, their transportation go up. The person who also does the grinding of the cassava to paste for Gary processing buys petrol. The person who also does, or does the grinding buys machines. And those machines that are used to grind the Gary, the prices will go up when you go to purchase any of them or condiment that gets spoiled in the market because those things are imported items used as machinery for grinding Gary. And those imported machinery do get controlled by the behaviors in the furnishing market. So Gary is not that local. No, Gary has a lot of factors that go into making them available in our homes and on our breakfast and lunch plus. Uh, uh, Dr. Nanaju, yes. Dr. Nanaju, yes, how, yes, yes. how, how would you then want to rationalize the point that the gentleman made regarding the fact that he just came back from Ghana and the price per liter of petroleum product in Ghana is almost double or about twice the price in Nigeria and yet transport fare in Ghana is not as lousy or lousily uh, exorbitant as it is in Nigeria. You're talking about Ghana, a nation where people are a little bit measured and people do advise themselves when they behave. That's not the same as Nigeria. Nigeria is not a nation. Nobody's loyal to Nigeria. Just by saying the rumor of what government intends to do, people will astronomically adjust their prices. Nigeria, everybody wants Nigeria on their own terms. Understand that. The government officials are not sincere. So why would you force, as he's speaking, he expects the Gary seller to be patriotic? Who is? Why would they be patriotic when the government officials are not patriotic? That's the issue. We need to do a holistic patriotism about who we are. The politicians are not showing patriotism. So why are you going to demand from the Gary seller or the person who's buying the Gary? Dr. Nanudu. Yes. Dr. I think I want to disagree. I think I want, but I think I want to disagree vehemently no, with no, Dr. Nanudu on that point. Alistair, I mean Alistair, vehemently. Please, one minute, one minute. Uh, uh, Alistair, one minute, please. Uh, Dr. Nanudu, do you say the politicians are not, are not honest? Uh, hello? I am listening to you. Yes, I am here. Go on. Did, did, did I hear from your remark that the politicians are not honest? Why would we expect the ordinary Nigerian to be honest? That is my that is my word, yes. 
Is that not an indictment of somebody like you who is also a, a very visible, very notable political within the context of our partisan partisan space in Nigeria? Are all politicians like that? If 85% of the politicians are not honest, I think that does not encourage the other Nigerians to also show honesty when you now demand patriotism from them. That's what I'm saying. There is a lot okay, okay of dishonesty in our that. system. And that dishonesty okay. is also the reasons why you see people arbitrarily increase prices because they really do not have that patriotism. Yes, we have just changed the version of the national anthem we want to because the government world does understand that there is lack of patriotism amongst our citizens. That's why they believe that okay, okay, Doc. Okay, Doc. We need to, we need to, we need to. I come back. I come back for your epilogue. I come back to you for your epilogue. Uh, but Nelson, Nelson, let's go to foreign affairs now. Foreign policy, Nelson Kujimi. I'm reading the president's uh, promise on, on foreign, uh, foreign affairs. On foreign policy, even the world in which we reside. Please permit me a few comments regarding foreign policy. The crisis in Sudan and the turn from democracy by several nations in our immediate neighborhood are of pressing concern. As such, my primary foreign policy objective must be the peace and stability of the West African subregion and the African continent. We shall work with ECOWAS the AU are willing partners in the international community to end extant conflicts and to resolve new ones. As we contain threats to peace, we shall also uh, we shall also retool our foreign policy to more actively lead the regional and continental quest for collective prosperity. Now see your take of this before we wrap it up. Finally, for today, is Nelson there? Nelson Akujimi, uh, we seem to have lost him. Okay, uh, Alistair, your epilogue. How would you want to wrap it up? You know, I, I don't like being, I, I don't like going the simplistic way of saying uh, what percentage would you give an administration, especially when we were just one year to a four year tenure. But Alistair, Summarily, what would be your take of the first year and what would be your advice to the administration uh, in the direction they should be going subsequently? Alistair. Well, um, well uh, let me just uh, just just say a little on just a, 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 a few a few words on what uh, my colleague said. I think I disagree on the fact that it's because politicians are not patriotic. Therefore, that's why Nigerians are not patriotic. Look, we are we have remained unpatriotic even before the time of Idiagbo that came to bring war against the discipline. And when Idiagbo left government, uh, Babangeda tried and uh, Becha tried. But by, by the time we came back to civilian rule, our indiscipline became extraordinary. It didn't start today. It didn't start by this government. So, so blaming the politicians or the government as why you are not dis we are not disciplined. Look, it's not because the Ghanaians. Uh, and uh, I mean, are not all patriotic. Yes, they have higher level of patriotism. Here, politics divides us. Party divides us. We wish the country bad. We don't. We're not happy with the country when it makes progress because it's not from our party or from our side of the Gulf country. So it is an inborn thing, and the profiteering Alistair, after Alistair, COVID. Alistair, in the last in the last ten years, uh, the Ghanaian partisanship too has gone rabid. I know that their political environment is as acrimonious, as, as acrid and venomous as ours is. I guess, uh, and that is a function in most liberal democracies, that is a function of the direction that social media is taking, taking us. Everybody lives in his own cocoon. You listen, you want to listen to those in your own group and the other group, you abuse everybody there. So it's not peculiar to Nigeria. I want to. No, believe. but, but, but like, the difference is they can abuse the president, they can abuse the 
the, the speaker, they can abuse the, 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 the opposite party, but they don't abuse the country. They love Ghana. They remain Ghanaians. And that is what is lacking in Nigeria. And if the government makes okay. a rule, they obey. I mean, there is... Okay. There is, let, there let is me give that to one of the there is to, 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 So, just in a nutshell, time, well, just time, just time, minute, time, time, in a nutshell, I will appreciate that the president does better in the second year. Thank you. Let, let me go to... Uh, I thank you for being part of this today. Uh, Dr. Nanuju, how would you want to wrap it up? I will tell you, I will tell you that the government needs to wake up and find the political will to do the right thing, fight corruption. Once the citizens see that you're serious through the kind of signs that you give them, they will fall behind. But when the citizens think Dr. Nanuju, are you just Dr. Nanuju, not serious? Are you corrupt? Dr. Nanuju, you will not get their cup. Yes. When I hear when I hear the phrase "fight corruption," I sometimes think it is too nebulous. What are the strategic suggestions you have for the methodology to fight corruption in Nigeria? Because uh, Buhari's administration supposedly for eight years fought corruption. We later got to know that uh, the suspect was indeed was under him. So what strategic points would you recommend for the fight against corruption? It's similarly the bullet to justify corruption. Buhari is uh, a fundamental dishonest person. Uh, so you don't cite him. He just deceived us with rhetoric and then he showed who he is once he got into power. So he is Someone I will tell you is irredeemable, and uh, you've seen that he is just not a man you should fight. Let Tinibu show us true signs that he is serious about fighting corruption. Once we and see, Dr. Nanuju, this is we where we wrap it up for today. And embrace his my, my, my good doctor, thank you very much for your virtual presence on Plus Politics today. Uh, about time we wrapped it up. I remain Bola over and have a good evening. <laughs>